All right, so what we are going to do today is I want us to go through and review a couple things about bonding, okay? So I started to look at your quizzes, and I think we have just a couple issues with um, some, some basic knowledge here, okay? Nothing major, okay? No one needs to worry or freak out, okay? But I just want to give us another opportunity to review this, um, so that way it helps us just, you know, solidify that knowledge here, okay? Um, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to share my screen. Um, and what I would like is that you all should take notes. So either on a piece of white paper, if you've got it, or um, if you can split screen notability or whatever, okay? Um, but what I would like is if you could take notes along with me, so that way um, you guys have that for your resource and you are good to rock and roll here, okay? So like I said, we're gonna walk through a bunch of stuff here and I already have some things kind of templated out, if you will. Um, so we're gonna fill in these blanks here. And then um, we are going to um, we are going to do a couple worked problems, and then at the end of class, I'm going to release to you uh, an activity that should hopefully take you five to ten minutes at the absolute worst if you understand what we are doing here. Okay. Um, and again, this is a little bit review, a little bit new stuff, um, but I'm going to try to call on people. So just. Be ready, be willing, okay? Because the faster you go and the more willing you are to participate, um, the more we all learn from this, okay? So like, for example, Nessa, you with me? Oh, Vanessa, perfect. All right, so Nessa, we're gonna start off our notes here and I'll give everybody a second, okay? But you're gonna start us off here. What are the three types of bonds? Ionic, metallic, and something with a C. Covalent, right? The new one. So we've got ionic, metallic, and covalent. Ionic, metallic, covalent. Okay, ionic, metallic, covalent, right? So those are our three types of bonds here. Vanessa, you're almost done here, okay? What elements are involved in ionic bonds? Metals, nonmetals, or both? Mm, I think metals. And? Mm. Um, non metals Correct. Metals and non-metals, right? Metals and non-metals. That's what's involved in ionic bonds here. Okay. So then metallic bonding, Nessa, what does that involve? Um, metals. Metals only, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's use some process of elimination here. We've got a bond with metals and nonmetals. We've got a bond with metals only. What's the last option we have for covalent? Nonmetals. Only, right? Nonmetals only. Perfect. Okay, so those are our three basic types of bonds here. So that question that I asked you on your quiz here about, you know, what elements are involved, this is what I'm talking about. These are your elements. They are the elements that are involved, okay? Metals, non-metals, all that fun stuff, okay? Uh, Yasmin, you with me? Yes. Perfect, you're gonna hit it up for us, okay? So we're gonna do electron behavior and bonds, okay? So again, I know this sounds very complicated, but we're gonna break it down and hopefully it's a little bit easier here, okay? So in ionic bonds, Nessa just told us we have metals, and we have nonmetals. Okay, Yasmin, do metals have a lot or a little valence electrons? Um, a lot. Try again. A little. Little, right? Because metals are the ones that are gonna give those guys up, right? They're on the left-hand side of our periodic table. So let me draw it out for you. This is apparently a periodic table, right? Okay, so all of these guys are my metals. This is the rather give up, you know, they'd rather give up their electrons, okay? And then over here is my nonmetals, right? It's easier to gain electrons, okay? So my metals have, let's say, for example, one. My nonmetals, let's go and make this easy and say it has seven. Okay, now, 
I am obviously missing one electron here, Yasmin. Okay. Am I going to give the metal, or sorry, give the electron from the metal to the non-metal, or am I going to move all of the electrons from the non-metal to the metal? Um, the metal is going to give it to the non-metal. Perfect. The metal is going to give it to the non-metal, right? So the electron behavior in the bond is that exactly what she just said. The electron goes from metal to non-metal. Goes from metal to non-metal. All right. Goes from metal to non-metal. All right, metal to non-metal. Okay, I'll give you a second, let that sink in. Okay, now when we form this new bond, right, we have our metal who's sharing with our non-metal, right, and we look something like this, our metal becomes positive, our non-metal becomes negative. We're having a grand old time here, okay? So that's, that's what happens for electrons in ionic bonds, right? And Yasmin, one last question here. What are we trying to get to? How many valence electrons? Eight. Eight. We want eight valence electrons, also known as the octet rule. Right? We want eight valence electrons. We're trying to get to eight, and we're going to go to that octet rule here. Okay. Uh, Delaney, are you with us? Yeah. Perfect. Okay, you're going to help me out with metallic here. All right. Uh -huh. Nessa told us it only involves metals, so we're going to keep with our same one metal with a little hat on. Okay. When metals go through bonding, what happens to this electron? Do you know? Um, it loses it. Perfect. The metal now becomes positive and we lose that electron. Okay, perfect, good job. All right. So the behavior is that we lose the electron. And it becomes, do you remember that fancy word we used? It starts with a D? Mm, no. That's okay. Delocalized, right? That's that fancy chem word that we're using. It becomes delocalized, right? So what that means is, is if we go over here and we draw all of our metals, metal plus, metal plus, metal plus, okay? What that means is, sorry, it keeps moving. These little electrons are completely free to move about. And the squiggly lines are them moving. Okay. So these electrons are free to move. All right. And I'm writing that. They are free to move. That's what delocalized means. Okay. They are free to move and they cause this thing called overlap right? But they are stable, right? They are stable because of this thing called overlap. And so because of the electron overlap with those metals, that metallic bond is stable. But as we talked about, because they're so free to move, that's why these metals are bendable or you can put them into sheets and they don't break apart, right? It's because it's all bound, but it is loosely bound, right? It's loosely bound, okay? Good job, Delaney. That was pretty much it for metallic, okay? All right, uh, Nyla, are you here? Can I go to the bathroom? Sure, absolutely. Nyla, are you here? Yeah, I'm sorry. That's all right. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna draw this one a little funky just for the sake of our purpose. Okay, you're gonna help me with covalent. All right, so in that simulation that we did yesterday, okay, what happens to these two electrons? Do you remember? Okay. Um, you're right, come on, keep going. Um, 
I got two holes. What's gonna happen? They give off the electron. Or did I they giving them up or what are they doing? Replacing. How about sharing? Sharing. Yeah. <laughs> Right? So they are sharing those electrons. Okay, they are sharing those electrons. Right? So what that looked like yesterday was something like again, that where the nonmetal, right? Is this looking a little familiar? Yes. Okay. Right? So this, they now start to share, okay? They share these electrons, all right? Uh, and that's pretty much where we're gonna end it, right? It, this is exactly what that picture showed. They're sharing, right, or single, or that triple, okay? All right, now, perfect. So they share these electrons, and I'm gonna point something out here, okay? I'm gonna shade this in. When they share, they form one bond, okay? So this guy here is sharing two electrons. This guy here is sharing four electrons and then six electrons, okay? Because each, each line, okay, so this line stands for two electrons. That stands for two, four, two, four, six. Okay, and we will talk about that more um, in, in a couple days here. All right, now show of emoji thumbs or reactions, I think it's called. Um, can everybody give me a thumbs up if you understand what we're talking about here? Okay, give me a thumbs up if you understand what we're talking about here. Perfect. Okay, um, all right, so that should mostly be review here. Okay, mostly be review. Now, what I want to get to is naming of these ionic compounds, okay? So if we're talking about the rules for ionic compounds here, all right, let me see who I got. Um, Abby, you with me? Yep. Perfect. All right, so with ionic compounds, does it go metal, non-metal, or non-metal, metal? Um, I think it goes not metal, non-metal. It right? does. It goes metal, then non-metal. Right, metal then non-metal, okay? And then remember we had special rules for metals. Like if I'm in the S and the P, what happens? Anything? Um, no, doesn't it? Or D and F, nothing happens, doesn't it? Nope, you were right the first time. Okay. I'm in the okay. S and P. S and P. Right? right? But when I'm in the D and the F, what do I have to add to the ending? Um, the I, D, E at the end. No. Right. Nope, that's the second one. So we'll write that there for non-metals. For non-metals, she just said it. We add, add I, D, E, okay? But remember this thing called Roman numerals? Oh, the, yeah, at the number, okay, yeah, I remember right? now. Right, right, yeah, there you go. So if we look over here at our examples for ionic, NaCl, Abby becomes sodium, not chlorine, but Chloride. Chloride, good, chloride. Okay, we've got magnesium. Bromide, or bromide? Bromide, yeah, you're right, you're right, good, bromide. Okay, and then this last one here, I'm gonna give it to you because it's a little bit more difficult. Okay, this is that silver one chloride. Okay, and the reason we know it is silver is because it has to have a plus one charge, or sorry, the reason we know this is, one is because it's that plus one charge there, okay? Um, like I said, I'll either have to give you the charge, like telling you it's AG plus, or I'd have to tell you it's silver one, okay? Good, good job, Abby. All right. Questions on this one, ladies? All right, Mercedes, you're gonna help me out with this next one here. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So for metallic, okay. Actually, I'm totally going to give this be beginning part to you. There is no change, right? We call silver, silver. We call gold, gold. There is no change to the name. 
okay? The only difference is, is we use this word called an alloy. Mercedes, do you remember? Alloy, does it mean pure or not pure? Pure. Mm. Not pure. Yeah, not pure, right? Not pure, okay? Right, so if we're looking at my pictures now, Mercedes, let's pretend this blue dot is gold. Woo -hoo. All right. So if that blue dot is gold, this first one, is this a pure or an alloy? Uh, pure. It is. It's pure gold. And if it's pure gold, we're all rich. Okay. Now this next one here, let's say, again, this green is something like silver. Okay. So we don't say this is pure gold anymore, Mercedes. We call it a gold what? Alloy. Yeah, there you go. Gold alloy right? So a lot of the times this is the difference between something like a six carat gold and a 24 carat gold, right? That's just talking about how pure that is, how pure that is, okay? Now, before we get to covalent bonding, all right, okay, before we get to covalent bonding, I just want to give you a heads up and give you a chance to write this all down before, okay? So, if I scroll down here, this is what we're going to talk about. Okay, we're going to talk about, sorry, we're going to talk about the rules for covalent bonding, and then we're going to go over some common IDE elements, right? Okay, I think those are an issue, and then obviously the prefixes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pause for a second to give you a moment to pre-write out all of this stuff so that way when we go to it we can fly through the questions okay so i'm going to give you a, a minute or two here um to copy this down and get yourself situated all right so give me a moment here
Okay, sorry about that, ladies. That took a little longer than anticipated. All right, so if we get back to our notes here for covalent bonding, okay, covalent bonding. So we had a couple rules that we went over. Um, we went over yesterday on that video, um, but we're going to still change. Okay, we're going to change the ending of the second element of second element to IDE. Okay. Miss Judy. Yes. If you're like writing something, we can't see it. Oh. Let me thank you for letting me know. Let me stop sharing and then let me reshare. Yes, Judy. Yes, Joey. Here we go, ladies. Does this work? Can we see it now? Yep. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So we're going to change the ending of the second element to end in IDE. And we are going to add prefixes to both the first and second element. Okay. We're going to add to the first and to the second element. Yes. Okay, so we are adding prefixes to both the first and second, except for there's one exception, E X C E P T. Okay, the exception is if there is a one on the first element. Okay, if there's a one on the first element, and we'll do a little bit of practice with this here, okay? Um, but if we keep rolling here, all right, if we keep rolling here, okay, let's let's cover first these common IDE elements, okay? Um, these common IDE elements. So, CC, can you help me out with these? If you don't know one, uh, just let me know. Um, bromide. Good, you've got bromide, M-I-D-E, then? Fluoride. Correct. Then chloride. chloride. Iodide. Correct. Iodide. Sulfide. Sulfide. Good. Phosphide. Phosphide. Nitride. Good. Uh, carbide. Yeah, that one's so funny. Carbide. And um, hydride. Correct, hydride. So we've got carbide and we've got hydride. Now, Miss Cece, did you memorize all those or how did you how did you know? Um, I just added IDE to the ending. Perfect. Okay, you just add IDE to the ending. And then uh, let me just point out a couple things here, ladies. Sometimes it's just whatever sounds good, right? Like if we looked at hydrogen. H Y D R O G hydrogide, like that doesn't sound good, right? So you got to use a little bit of common sense here, but I want to keep this here because these are the most common IDEs that we're going to use, okay? Um, so this should be your pretty comprehensive list here, all right? Um, now, who haven't I called on? Alicia, are you back? Yeah. Perfect. Can you help me out here with these prefixes? Um, kind of. Okay, hit me. What do you know? Which ones do you know? You tell me. Wait, like, what are, like, could you just explain them, like, again, like, what yeah. they are? Yes. So, prefixes are the things that come before, right? So, pre means before. So, it's before the word, or in this case, it's going to be before the element. So, if I told you, Alicia, mono. Right, if I told you mono, what does that stand for? One, two, or three? Uh, two. Hmm? 
Three? Nope. One? Yeah. Okay. So mono. So if I said mono bromide, that would mean you have one bromine. You have one bromine. Now, at least yeah. if I said dye, what does that mean to you? Uh, I'm really lost. That's all right. How about I just fill these in and we'll talk about it as we go. Okay. okay. <laughs> so mono means one. Di means two. Okay. Tri means three. Like a tricycle, it is a bike with three wheels, right? Okay. Four is tetra. Okay. Tetra. These might be a lot of new words here. Penta, like pentagram, right? That it's five sides. Okay. So the penta is five. Hexa, like a hexagon, that would be six. Hepta, H-E-P-T-A, sorry, I'll rewrite that. That's bad handwriting. Hepta, H-E-P-T-A is seven. Hepta is seven, all right? Octa is eight, O-C-T-A, Octa is eight. This is a weird one, Nana, N-O-N-A, N-O-N-A is nine. And then the last one that we're gonna use is Deca, okay? So the prefixes are mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nana, deca, okay? So Alicia, if I said deca carbon, how many carbons do I have? Uh, deca carbon. Deca carbon. Ten. Ten. If I said hexa sulfur, how many would I have, Alicia? Six. Six. Right. And then if I said tetra iodine, I would have how many? Four. Four. Right. So that that's what I'm asking you here. Okay. And this is where we're gonna end. We've got four minutes. I believe in us. We can get through this here. Okay, Katie, are you with me? Yeah. Yeah, right, okay. So this is the examples that we're gonna go through and this is what you need in order to be able to do your worksheet, okay? So for these examples, we said if the element, if the first element is alone, okay, we are going to write out the name of the first element if that element is alone, right? So we are going to write, and I'll do this first one here, Katie, and then you're gonna do the next two for me, okay? So rule one says write out the name of the first element. Okay, carbon. Then it says two, use the prefix of the second and write the element. Okay, well I have one oxygen, so mono oxygen. And then rule three says change the ending to IDE. So I'm no longer mono oxygen, I turn to mono oxide, mono oxide. Okay, um, now Katie, can you do this next one for me? What am I gonna start with? Um, nitrogen. Nitrogen. And then dioxide. Correct, dioxide. Di meaning two, oxide, because you have to change the ending to the IDE. Okay, for SP3, what is it gonna be, Katie? Sulfur triphosphide. Sulfur triphosphide. Good. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So that's how we do this if this first element is alone here. All right. Um, Grayson, you with me? Grayson. Yeah. Perfect. You're going to bring us on home here, girl. All right. Now, the last examples we're gonna do is if the element, if the first element has a more than one, okay? So I'll do the first one, you're gonna follow along with the next two, okay? So for the prefix of this, for nitrogen, we have two, so I'm gonna write di-nitrogen, okay? So that's what step one says. I write out the prefix and the name, so di-nitrogen. Step two says, use the prefix of the second and write the element. So six is hexa. So I'm gonna say hexa oxygen. I was trying to cheat already. O-X-Y-G-E-N. 
oxygen. And then I'm gonna change the ending to IDE, okay? So this now becomes hexoxide or hexaoxide. Okay. Either or, but for easy sake, write hexa, then write oxide. Okay. Grayson, do the next one here. H2O. Okay, so what's the prefix for two? Uh, di. Okay, what's H stand for? Hydrogen. Okay. Now, oxygen has a one there, so what's the prefix for one? Mono. Okay. And what's oxygen become? Oxide. Perfect. All right, take us home. Last problem here, Queen. Um, what are the ones for four and seven? Four is tetra, and seven is hepta. Okay. Um, so... Uh, that would be sulfur, tetrasulfur. You're right, tetrasulfur, right? You just write four sulfur, then how many chlorines? Heptachloride. Yeah, there you go. Tetrasulfur heptachloride. Isn't that kind of a mouthful? <laughs> yeah. Okay. But now you can look at your parents. I know you probably won't do it, but if you're trying to be funny, this is water. You can look at her and say, hey, mom, I want some dihydrogen monoxide. She's not going to find it very funny, but I will. All right. Okay. So that is the basics. Okay. That is the basics for naming. All right. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to release to you a baby worksheet. Okay. Um, as I told you, it's going to take you five to 10 minutes now that we've gone through some basics here. All right. Um, Again, you can do it on notability, you can do it on a piece of paper, take a picture of it, whatever you want. Um, I just did not let you edit that PDF directly. Okay, any immediate questions here, ladies? Give me a thumbs up if you got what's going down here. Ms. Sudi? Yes, ma'am. Um, can you put like the notes on Classroom just in case? Absolutely, I will definitely do for you. And I believe I can put this recorded video or I don't know if you've heard this yet or saw it. I started recording things on YouTube because it Google's freaking out. So I can always put this on YouTube like this discussion and then you can go back and watch that as well too. But I'll definitely put the notes. All right. If we have no questions, um then I will see you tomorrow work on that worksheet and turn it in for me. Class is over. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye ladies.